really cranking up the weight today because today is American heavy. My name's Martin Keane. I'm taking the homebrew challenge to brew 99 beers in 99 weeks. And yeah, I have got a whole bunch of cool equipment to show off in the next few videos. Starting today with this tap cooler. This is a counter pressure bottle filler. And I'm gonna show how I can use this to fill bottles directly from my beer taps. But before we get to any of that, let's get on with the beer style of the day, which is American Strong Ale. Now with every brew system I've ever had, oh, I'm here. With every brew system I've ever had, I have noticed that once you get to the higher gravity beers, you typically see a bit of a drop in efficiency. And I've been seeing that as I've been doing some of these stronger beers this time out as well. So what I wanted to try is that given that this system that I'm using, this claw hammer system is brew in the bag, I wanted to look at maybe having a finer crush on the grain and seeing how that affects my efficiency. So what I've got here are grains that have come straight from the homebrew store. So this is straight out of the mill at Atlantic Brew Supply. Um, and this is what I just normally go with. Uh, now I have a monster mill here that I'd set to in inches 0.045 of an inch is my mill gap, which is like the standard sort of credit card size. You could just about stick a credit card down there. I'm gonna try adjusting that to 0.03 inches. And I'm gonna do that with my feeler gauge. So here is a total of 0.031 inches. That's close enough. I'm gonna adjust my mill to that. Okay, so I think this will give me a much finer crush. Let's give it a go. Okay, so what we've got here, definitely, it's definitely a finer crush at this point. I'm, I'm gonna give this one a try. Well, this definitely feels different stirring it in. It feels a lot more pasty, you know, like you've added a load of powder into water and you're trying to give it a stir and it's really stiff. Um, I'm mashing here at a temperature of 150 Fahrenheit, 66 Celsius. Um, so fairly low and slow with this. All right, I think I've got the clumps out. So now recirculate. So what does the style of American Strong Ale equate to? Well, as its rather generic sounding name suggests, it is a bit of a catch-all for a lot of different styles. Now, strong does refer to the alcohol strength. This should be a fairly strong beer. Uh, around 8% is normal, and I'm going with an original gravity of 1076. So yeah, I'm, I'm expecting to get about 8% out of this. It's also going to be pretty highly hopped but we're not building like just an Imperial IPA here because we are gonna add some flavors that really accentuate the malt and a little bit of toffee flavor as well. So my version of this beer is built on two row pale malt. That makes up 76% of my grist. And then I'm adding 12% of biscuit malt. In addition to that, I'm adding 6% of flaked barley and 6% of special B. Okay, demo time. Do you, like my, do you like my new setup here? I've got this table on the side and uh, my overhead camera here as well. Um, what I'm demoing today is a counter pressure bottle filler. So you've got beer in a keg and you wanna get it into a bottle. Uh, you know, you could just pour the beer in from the tap into the bottle, you're gonna get a ton of air. Um, so any beer that you put in there is not gonna be good for very long. So 
counter pressure fillers are a very nice way of being able to reduce the amount of oxygen. So I have this one that was provided to me by Great Fermentations. So here is the tap cooler and it just fits into any Ford ceiling beer tap. So Perlic or Nuka tap or Intertap, any of those Ford ceiling taps, uh, you just put this in and then connect it to some gas and then you can use it as a counter pressure filler. Um, there's a bunch of little gadgets here. Uh, basically, this needs to go in the tap and then this side needs to get some gas. There is a little barb here that you can insert and then connect that in to some gas. But quite fantastically, there is this little guy which gives you a ball lock connection to this. So I can plug this in, connect it to my gas and there we go, I've got gas into there super quick and easy. Right, I do have my keg here, um, and I've got this cool little gadget here, which just is a um, beverage quick disconnect and a perlic tap. So I'm gonna stick this on my keg. And make sure that the tap is closed before pouring anything. One second. Now I'm gonna take my sanitized bottle this is telescopic, so I'm gonna put it out, put my bottle into this. And then the first thing I wanna do is flush the oxygen out of the bottle. Uh, so the way that I do that is I press this button here. That's sending CO2 into the bottle and pushing out the oxygen. Then when I'm ready to fill, I'm gonna push this up to the top and turn on the tap. And you'll see that the beer begins to fill into the bottle. Now pretty quickly it's gonna stop because uh, the pressure has equalized, so we'll just need to bleed off some pressure. Yep, and it's now filling up nice and slowly. And wouldn't you know it, I kicked the keg. <laughs> okay, well I've kicked the keg, so I'm not gonna get a full pour out of this. So, assume this bottle is completely full. Um, what I want to do now is as I bring it out, I can just use this button again to flush the remaining CO2 in there. And then at that point, I can cap the beer. And there you go. Yeah, this works better if you haven't kicked the keg, but this is just such an easy way of getting beer out of your keg through your tap and straight into the bottle and making sure that you're doing that without introducing too much oxygen into the beer. Well, the mash seemed to go pretty well. I ended up bumping up the temperature to 168 Fahrenheit, 76 Celsius. Took a pre boil gravity reading. Beer Smith said I was where I should be. So draining down, now I'm getting ready for the boil. And yes, this is a hoppy beer. I'm going for an IBU of about 86 with this. So we're gonna start off with a bittering hop, and that is gonna be Chinook. That is what I will put in at the start of the boil. And then I have two other hop additions, one at 10 minutes, and then one at flame out. So with 10 minutes to go, I'm going to add Chinook, Amarillo, and Simcoe into the boil. And then at flame out, Amarillo and Simcoe again are going to go in with zero minutes to go. And they all smell, these hops, so delicious. This should be good. Ended up with a final gravity of 1075, which was about what I was aiming for. Did the finer mash end up making much of a difference? Well, I don't know. I ended up hitting my usual efficiency numbers, but I did only have to mash for an hour. And often I find that I do need to mash a little bit longer than that if I want to hit my numbers uh, with some of those high gravity beers. So maybe it helped a little bit. Okay, the yeast for this beer, I've got it sanitizing here. This is American Ale 2, that's Y-East 1272. And I'm gonna pitch this one straight in now because I have got my temperature in here at about 68 degrees, that is 20 Celsius. 
Yep, and then I'm gonna give this one a few weeks. Give it a try. They say love is free, but it's more than you can see. It's a song, it's a melody. So you cracked out the old English bitter glasses for this one. Yeah, it's been a while since we've had these. It, it has, and you know, actually, this does look a little bit like an English bitter in, in terms of colour. I see that. But it's a bit stronger Is it? than British bitter, yes. Sorry, I was looking, it's like, I can't really see through it. It's very, um, like, hazy. Yeah, pretty uh -huh. hazy, pretty yeah. cloudy. Uh, let's see if we get anything on the aroma here. Well, it smells actually <laughs> quite like a British bitter as well. Uh, very malty, what do you think? It also smells a little bit on the sweet side. Yes, like, yeah. Just very, like, subtly, like, you know those maraschino cherries? Mm -hmm. It kind of smells a little bit like that. Yeah. No, maybe? I'm not getting cherry, but I'm getting sweet but for sure. Those are sweet cherries. Yes. Like, they're not real cherries, they're fake. So, yeah. <laughs> so, fake sweetness is what you're getting. Just, yeah, the yeah. nose smell. I hope it doesn't taste like that because I don't like this. I hope it's not going to taste like cherries too because. Like real cherries, yeah, but fake something cherries. Something went horribly wrong if it tastes like cherries. Okay. Let's find out. Okay, this does not taste like English bitter. No, not at all. Cherries? A little bit of maraschino in there. For really? Me. <laughs> yeah, wow. just a little bit, but it might have just been the smell of playing tricks on my taste buds. There is a fruitiness to this beer. I think there is something sweet and fruity combined with the very strong malt palette to this. Have you ever had, I know you have, those chocolates that you have at Christmas that are like the, um, they have a little bit of li liqueur in yeah. them. Like it's like a dark chocolate with a little fruity liqueur. That's kind of what I taste. Like it doesn't taste like chocolate or no. anything like that, but the the filling of those chocolate liqueurs. Hmm. Kinda, yeah, I, I, I know what you're saying. But it's hard to pinpoint. Yeah. It's not like cloy sweet. Mm -mm. Uh, it is a little fruity though. It is a very malty. Very malty, yeah. Yeah, I think it's actually pretty pretty pleasant. It's mm. it's already quite complex and this is another one of those beers that are even better if they age a little longer. Mm. I think this this has come out pretty good. Um, yeah, complex is what we're going with, right? Yes, it's the word of the day. <laughs> word of the day, complex, a little bit of everything. <laughs> so if you'd like a go at brewing this complex beer yourself, recipe is in the description, as is a link to Atlantic Brew Supply for the beer kit. Uh, next week we are going to go with another strong beer, okay. but something a little bit different. So until then, cheers! cheers.